I'm getting cancelled today. Because Jingyuan equal to Serval with equal investment. I've been saying QQ F tier since last tier list, by the way. Subscribe! Hey guys, Mr. Pokey here, back with another video. Today, we have with us the four horsemen of apocalypse for the apocalyptic nuclear destruction tier list. Toonhub, Sarah, Hippo, and Zarya. They are the four sweatiest meta players in Hongai style history. And I have the honor of inviting these villagers today to share with us the updated tier list as of patch 2.0 with the inclusion of Sparkle, right? So from Toonhub, Sarah, Hippo, Zarya, please go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hey, hello. I'm Discord the moderator. Are you really okay, sure I'm you wanna go? Guys. Do you are you sure you wanna go with the intro okay. before you get fucking flamed to death on like are you sure are you sure are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? <laughs> Look, honestly, right? Who gives a fuck, you know? Okay, okay. They're yeah, gonna you... hate, they're gonna hate. Alright, I mean, you do you alright, you do if, you. If it gets the I mean if it gets the comments, you know, that's all that matters, right? Yeah, you do, you do you. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, no, so hi guys. It's me, a Toon. I'm sure most of the uh most of the villagers in the Discord know me, right? I'm the uh unfit mod. Hello, it's me. It's Sarah. I am the Twitch mod. You probably see me in a lot of Honkai Star Rail Twitch channels, in YouTube comments, in Discord, because I'm everywhere. Everybody tells me I'm everywhere. Everyone's surprised that I'm everywhere, but I know things. I know too many things. I'm the PvP god. I'm just kidding. I'm not a PvP god. I have the most losses. I have more losses than the second person has games. Hello, everyone. It's me, everyone's favorite helper in the village, and I'm getting cancelled today. Hey, guys. I'm a professional, well, not really professional, guide maker for the village. And actually, Hippo, you're wrong because I am their favorite helper, and I will fight you on that. We need a poll. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because all four of you guys are dead after this, right? So, uh, anyway, <laughs> this time we're gonna because the other time there was there was way too much yapping. So hopefully this episode we're gonna keep it to within one hour, and maybe editor son can clip it to even shorter, maybe 40, 50 minutes, and that will be ideal. Basically, the context for the tier list first investment we're taking in end game investment. It doesn't have to be like perfect builds, but as good as you can get. Eight, ten months of like playing the game. If you're if you know what you're doing and if you've been farming your gears diligently and whatnot these are the builds that we're taking into account the list is also based on current moc and current pure fiction oh and we also take into account like sustain right that was a whole lot of yapping for basically the end game tier list the meta tier list right if you guys don't agree with this tier list uh it means that you guys are not meta players like these four players over here right? so uh we're gonna go through from Yep, DPS to support to sustain. All right, so let's start with DPS. Okay, the big one, our OP unit, OP ratio. Put it simply, this MOC is very single target focused with Meme and Sam. They're both imaginary weak. And guess what? The single target imaginary DPS is really good in the single target imaginary MOC. Uh, so we've got ratio as the OP. Chat thinks that Jing Liu should be OP. There's no complaints about that if it was a general tier list. But Jing Liu, side one, is great. Jing Liu against the meme, not so great. Ratio, very good against the meme. Side two is definitely the harder side of MOC this time around. So it, I think it has higher weight. And Ratio is just the highest like raw single target damage dealer in the game. And the energy refresh from the meme also really works in his favor. Because he just gets the free ult and the free follow-ups. So he is just broken this MOC. The engine could never, by the way. Free unit, guys. Oh, by the way, there, this is not in any order. This is just strictly by alphabetical. So if they're the same tier, they're the same tier, right? S plus tier, we have Imbibitor, Lunate, Jingdu, and Scylla. And keep in mind, these are all E0 S, right? They all have their signature icons. They're all E0, right? So Zarya, your thoughts on this? Although uh, this MOC is like sort of made for deal with the basic attack buff, he's still not performing as well as Dr. Ratio because second half is the like main half where there's a lot of imaginary weakness. So even though there's imaginary weakness and the MOC is made for him, it's a, still a single target focused MOC. And I've seen a lot of people argue for deal being better in single this MOC because of the like the two pillars like beside the meme. But then usually Dr. Ratio can just kill the meme before anything happens. And, but Dill can't do that most of the time unless you're playing E2. So yeah, that's why I think Dill is a worse than Dr. Ratio this MOC. Um, for Ting Liu, right? Uh, although she is by numbers best DPS in the, in the game, for this MOC, there's not really any ice weakness. And although Mr. Pokey proved half an hour ago that she can just brute force everything, although there's no ice weakness, I don't think most players can can do that. I know it's an endgame player, but I like I like to also throw in the perspective of like more casual players or like meta players who don't have the relic luck. Like for me, right? Even though triple I have triple supports, I'm not able to clear with 
a zero cycle of Jingyu. That's another thing to consider. Jile is just like a god tier character, no matter what MOC she's in, unless it's like a 40% quantum rest MOC. Because as long as she can kill anything, it doesn't even have to be mobs, as long as she can kill the elites, she is able to get her resurgence and do even more damage and get more uh, energy even faster. And with the new addition of Sparkle, she's just getting even better. Mostly Jingyu, Zarya's yapping. Uh, Jing Liu is completely broken, even with a sustain with Huo Ho, she easily zero cycles side one. So his Jing Liu is just brick. And yeah. Other I don't have right. S1, buddy. Yeah, that's your problem. Hoyo hates Sele. Oh, they don't like giving her ads, but she is still a complete monster if you have a good enough build. Would you say any of these units come close with Dr. Ratio? Or like he just like leaks above them? Nope. I think he's um, way above them. The only close competition that I, that I can see here is like Dill maybe, but even then it's not really too, too close. I think Dill, understandable, S+, plus. he's not as good as Ratio. Jing Liu, S+, plus. if we get Ice Weakness, she's gonna move up to OP because she is OP. Now, chat and everybody's gonna disagree, but Sila is probably the most controversial on here. She is arguably second this MOC to Ratio because she's the only one with a sustain that can zero cycle the meme reliably, but that's because CN players are mental and they will force Seal to zero cycle anything. So that's why she's S plus and that's why she's not S minus. Okay. Chat thinks she should be S minus. Although CN shows like what is absolutely capable, right? Like the, the absolute peak gameplay, would you say this might skew the perception of the a little bit? Because for example, like Zarya made a point, uh, my Jing Liu can, can, can zero cycle, when, um, even, even with a sustain, I think you can zero cycle with Jing Liu off element, but his Jing Liu couldn't do it because he wanted to think about the majority of the player base. So with that being said, do you think that um, having this kind of like, it's a kind of like, you know that the mean, medium, max, you're kind of like taking the max while ignoring the minion. Do you think this will affect the ranking of the units overall? It did, that's why she's an S+. Okay, so without this ranking affecting her, she would be OP, in your opinion? Yep, if it w if we weren't taking in the medium, she would be the OP. Honestly, I think, obviously, deal, you know, self-explanatory, nothing to add there. Uh, Sele, the character that like I've always supported uh, ever since day one, I just, I pretty much agree with what, what's been said. And essentially, Chat, all four of us, we are Sele appreciators. Oh yeah, that of cringe. Uh, yeah, anyways, uh, anything to add on? Anything you add on? Anything to add on? Uh, if your Sele is like 100 crit rate, 250 crit damage, uh, I can see her being better than Ratio, but that's pretty much it. With respect to what you said about like the CN clears, with three sustains, that is true. Like people can force any DPS to zero cycle with three, I mean, with three supports. But within the scope of two supports and a sustain, it becomes way more limited. Like even within top most geared out relics, the most 40 sub type characters. So I think with that consideration in mind, it doesn't really matter that CN is doing outrageous clears just because it is actually reachable. All right, S minus Jing Yuan and Kafka. Our two five star lightning DPSs. Well, since we have lightning weakness on top half this MOC, our general is making his grand return in the S tier. Because genuinely, okay, I wasn't a believer before, but after seeing the different clears, especially by people like uh, Leno, who's definitely one of the uh, most dedicated, or used to be one of the most dedicated Jing Yuan mains in the Discord, I can safely say that Jing Yuan at endgame he slaps, pretty much. And of course, Kafka is just because, uh, once again, it's like a lightning weakness MOC. Even though paired up with Black Swan, Black Swan is off element, the team still performs rather well, which is why she's in S-. minus. Uh, so, right now, Kafka, she's really comfy. That's why she's in S-. minus. Sure, she's not gonna be like hardcore zero cycling, but it's a one to two cycle with the dot com. Uh, the only issue I have is Jing Yuan being in S-, minus because Jing Yuan is equal to Blade, equal to Argenti, equal to Serval, with equal investment. Okay, ex ex explain your take before you get cancelled. If you have equal investment on Serval, Argenti, Blade, and you put them in a similar team comp, they are going to perform just as well or better with less RNG factors than Lightning Lord. Because when he gets CC'd, Lightning Lord ain't going to go and he's going to lose two cycles. Whereas if one of those gets CC'd, they're only losing one cycle because they have upfront damage not backloaded damage. But nobody has them invested as Jing Yuan because Jing Yuan was a 1.0 character. These characters are new and people don't invest into Servo because, oh no, I don't want to invest in a four star, even though it performs just as good as Jing Yuan with none of his downsides. 
Okay, I feel like that's probably like the first boiling take of the day. In Sarah's opinion, Saval performs the same as Jing Yuan. Plenty of people are just going to build whatever they like, but realistically, the average player skews towards building what's actually good. And I think there's a reason no human being plays Saval. And yeah, I mean, Jing Yuan is just the best lightning DPS in the game. He's been consistently performing in every MOC since his release with a good build. And yeah, I mean, there's not too much to add for him. The Lightning Lord isn't really as backloaded as people make it out to be because it consistently lands every single cycle. As for Kafka, I mean, the DOT teams are ultimately gated in terms of like the uh, the highest ceiling when you look at E0s especially, but she is consistent. She's reasonably fast on the current MOC, so she probably deserves to be where she is. This is not a zero cycle tier list. This is a end game meta tier list, so it's not strictly zero cycles. I actually think that Jing Yuan is pretty solid now because of Sparkle, but before Sparkle, he's definitely like pretty shit in my opinion. But now with Sparkle, I think he's definitely better than Servo. But before Sparkle, I could see Sarah's argument of Jing Yuan and Servo being like equal. And according to Sarah, Servo was just straight up better than Jing Yuan before Sparkle's release. So uh, I, I I half agree with Sarah, but I half disagree as well. Cause like the Sparkle's release, Jing Yuan is definitely not performing like nearly as bad as he used to. The CC thing is kind of like prevented by Fu Xuan's skill because it completely blocks a CC every time. So yeah, and about Kafka, I, I think she's worse than Jingyuan now. Hippos, right? Jingyuan is the best lightning DPS we currently have so far until 2.1. So um, I think she deserves her spot in S minus. I was fighting so much for Black Swan. But anyways, uh, yeah, that's what I have to say. Holy oh, shit, Komimos! Thank you so much for the raid. I do want to touch on two particular takes, namely Zarya's take on whether Jing Yuan's performance increased with Sparkle, as well as whether Jing Yuan is the same as Saval uh, with, with Sarah. First of all, I think Jing Yuan's best is not team comp. Doesn't really change with Sparkle's inclusion because if he previously used one sustained two support, those two support 99% of the time is probably going to be Runmei as well as Ting Yun. And for both Runmei and Ting Yun, their buffs will still affect the Lightning Lord, which is what made him really good. One argument that one could say is that honestly, this sparkle doesn't even change anything for Jingyuan. That is one thing. Second thing, I, I guess it's also for Hippo's take where Lightning Lord is not as backloaded as people think. Uh, I do kind of agree as well because no matter how slow it is, it's 100% gonna happen in that cycle unless you get crowd control and then that's kind of fucked. I'm just really interested to see the, the, the more expanded take on Jingyuan versus Serval because personally, I've never played Serval in my entire life. So, all right, this is a free for all. You guys can cook however you guys want. All right, go for it. I do want to add well, something because it's... <laughs> go ahead. Uh, uh, go on, go on. Yeah, sorry, go on, go on. All right, I do want to add something because Hippo made a good point. If people like the character, they will make the character work. And guess what? People love Jing Yuan. They love that man so much, they will go to the ends of the world to make this man work. Guess who people don't play? Four stars. That's why you're not seeing the equal performance. But if somebody does have both, they've got equal investment. Most of the people that I see clear just as fast with Serval than they do Jing Yuan, or it takes them less attempts to get that low cycle clear with Serval than it does Jing Yuan. Because if Jing Yuan's Lightning Lord doesn't kill the mobs in that zero cycle, his Lightning Lord only goes once in the next cycle. He, he can't make up that time unless his build is cracked. Yeah, I, I can see it. It's like selection bias. If people want something to be good, they will find data that proves the point that it is good. And because Jing Yuan's fan base is fundamentally bigger than Serval, you're going to find more examples of Jing Yuan clearing zero cycle. So I, I completely see how this take is valid. Okay, so what, what I was gonna touch on is the sparkle discussion. Okay, so obviously in two support, Ting Yun, uh, very much needed. And the debate is like between Rame and Sparkle. It was actually mentioned in our in our chat that we had. And Hippo said that yeah, it is technically better, and it is widely agreed by I think Sarah said that it is widely agreed by most CM players that Sparkle is slightly better, but it's only like about four percent. It's like yeah, it is good, but I wouldn't say, based on the evidence provided, that it's so good for him. Like, Sparkle's release was so good for Jing Yuan, as what Zarya mentioned. Uh, I just want to say, I fucking hate the, oh my god, 4% better, 2% worse. Like, how the fuck are you actually going to quantify that? Like, nobody's actually going to have the exact same verdicts to go. Like, unless it's so much better to the point where you actually shave off an entire cycle, I feel like anything that's like 4 or 5 or whatever, is like, it's completely negligible. So, in my opinion, I feel like they are exactly the same. Like, Jing Yuan's placement didn't change with Sparkle, so, yeah. Uh, Basically, it doesn't really matter that much, honestly. Okay. Sparkle just made Jingyuan like, more, more brain dead. Sparkle made Jingyuan uh, more brain dead. You want to okay. explain that? Uh, uh, 
just like though. he doesn't need he doesn't need speed anymore. He can just full full out attack boots. Uh, completely disregard speed, all in attack and crit. So that that's one thing that I feel like not many people uh really remember is that yes, uh, on paper Sparkle may not be like a huge 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 upgrade for Ting Yuan, but for like the average end game player. And I'm not talking about like Sha level or like Hippo level, I'm talking about like the end game player who is clearing in like 2 to 3 or like 1 to 2 cycles. Sparkle makes Xing Yuan much more comfy because you don't need to invest as much into like 20 different stats. You just need crit and attack. You don't need crit, speed and attack. That's my thoughts on Sparkle and Xing Yuan. And, that, and that's why I think Sparkle is such a huge improvement for Xing Yuan. Honestly, I'm gonna attack this argument a bit. Right? I don't think, considering Ran Mei Ting Yuan, that he needed speed boots even before then. All right? He would still be running attack boots because one, Ting Yuan, best the, the thought like guy. one most of the time. Okay, best thought like one most of the time. Dance, dance, dance. And it advances his action forward. And not only that, whenever he ults, he gets a speed buff because of Ting Yun as well. And Ran Mei gives him a speed boost. So with all that being said, I don't think speed was like, ever an issue, even before. That's why I don't really think the argument holds water, to be honest. But I guess in if you're talking about like strictly, because with that, it's possible to maybe somehow mess up tuning in some way or another, and you don't get 10 stacks. But I just don't really see the, the argument of, of Sparkle makes it like more comfortable or more brain dead. I mean, like if you have a free action, <laughs> action advance every turn, it kind of makes it more brain dead. Because uh, at the end of the day, he's going twice uh, every turn with Sparkle instead of once. At this point, I just want to say, if we were to pair Jing Yuan with Ting Yun Ramei instead of Sparkle Ramei. There is Ting Yun's speed buff from Benediction and there is Ramei's speed buff. And if you run Dance on Dance on one of them, I feel like Ting Yun can still go twice, right? Even while on the tech boots. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, he can. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. He, yeah, yeah, he can. It will, he will still be going twice, assuming you get like. It's only, it's only twice on cycle zero, though. It's not tw twice on like cycle one, cycle two. Sparkle makes him go uh, twice every single cycle. I think there's other yeah, arguments, I but I think we should probably flesh that out at the Sparkle section. This is just a rant at this point. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay, we, we can, yeah, we can leave the cooking as well. Be before we move on, can I yep. just say one thing about the four-star thing? Yep. I think that's a little bit disingenuous from Sarah because I'm wholly of the opinion that if something it has like the potential to be really good, then at least someone out there is crazy enough to put it into into action. And I swear, I spent the last one hour searching for serve all clears, and there's fuck all. People are crazy enough to like sit there and like RNG fish with QQ. Hello? What the fuck is going on? What? who has like a high damage ceiling, but really, really terrible gameplay experience. But there's no one playing so well, dude. I do have a response to this. CCs love Jing Yuan. CCs, content creators, show videos of Jing Yuan. People are gonna be like, oh, Lightning, Air Edition, why would I pick the four star version? They're gonna pick Jing Yuan because that's the one everybody watches. They got the Jing Yuan mains, they know it farms content. So that's why nobody's doing serve all. They don't wanna downgrade their Jing Yuan. I'm not saying that serve all should move up to S minus. I'm saying Jing Yuan should move down because of his consistency issues. I'm not saying anything about ranks. I'm saying it's telling that there's no one who's going out of their way to make serve all work. Well, okay, that's okay. because she like... doesn't have that high of a peak. Neither does Jing Yuan. But yeah, because she's love shit. The character. And Jing Yuan is shit in the, under that uh, logic. Because okay, they're okay, the guys, same I fucking think... character. Need... Guys, 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 I think we gotta stop this discussion because <laughs> we're just gonna be yapping about this for the next half an hour. Right? Why don't we move on to A plus now? Uh, Zarya, go. Um... Also, try not to yap too much about Black Swan. Uh, this is my pride and joy unit. I'm sorry. I, I love this woman to the end of the earth. Anyways, I, I wanted... I really wanted Black Swan to be an A+, because let's be real, Kafka does not exist without Black Swan, and Black Swan does not exist without Kafka. Whoa, so whoa, I... whoa, 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 Zarya. Yo, I gotta stop you right there, man. Yo, okay. Kafka has been a thing since the yeah, day she was Yeah, but she wasn't yeah. good. It's not like she was very good before Black Swan came out. She's okay. She wasn't, like, good. She was an S tier. Okay, but the thing opinion. is, that's because Black Swan is the first five star DOT and subsequently in the future when we have even more five star DOTs how are you gonna justify that? Yeah but but we haven't gotten any news on that so for now I do think that Black Swan and Kafka are like inseparable. I was like saying if Kafka is to be an S I think Black Swan should be an S as well because they kind of need each other right? Sure you can run Sampo you can run Luka you can run Queen Iphone whatever but would you really do that over Black Swan especially if you have Black Swan and if you're a DOT enjoyer would you really skip Black Swan? So that's just my take if Kafka is an S Black Swan should be an 
guess if Black Swan is A, Kafka should be A because they they don't exist without each other. Okay, for for Clara, she did get a pretty big buff from Sparkle, right? Uh, cause her follow ups now benefit from Sparkle's crit damage buff. And beforehand, it was just Ting Yun and Ran Mei, but now we have we have combinations of that we have Ting Yun, Sparkle, Ran Mei, Sparkle, stuff like that. And I do think that Sparkle is a same as Yun thing. It's a pretty big buff for Clara. And that's why she's an A+. For Topaz, although we have kind of memed on Topaz ratio among our group, like of Topaz and ratio being shit, for this MOC, it's really not that bad. It's because not shit. it's just... Okay, it's not shit, it's just not as good as like ratio hyper carry. But so it requires a lot of investment to be as good. Yeah, anyways, and just you can just ratio. bring that ratio with, with hyper carry. For this MOC, because meme has both fire and imaginary weakness, Topaz ratio is actually competing and sometimes even outperforming uh, ratio hyper carry. So that's why she's an A+. And that's it for me. I'm gonna start with Topaz because Black Swan's gonna get me cancelled for sure. Topaz is pretty decent on the current MOC 12 against Meme, mostly because the ratio is doing most of the heavy lifting in the team, which is why I think Topaz deserves to be a few ranks below ratio, even though they can be used on the same team. She's simply just not doing the single target damage that we need out of a hunt character, but against the Meme, her enabling is pretty good as a single target boss. Clara is one of the DPS that got the biggest buff from the introduction of Sparkle. She was already like a natural attack boot using DPS, and and now Sparkle like facilitates that even further by allowing her to act at Sparkle speed instead of Clara's own speed. And the the Sparkle buff also just uh, gets carried over onto all of Clara's follow-ups, so it works really, really well there. Now Black Swan, this is by far the single most overrated, easier DPS in the game, I swear to God. Every single person who tells me Black Swan is good happens to have E1. I really wonder why that is, but she's decent. She's not outstanding, especially not against uh, when it's not Wind Week. And if it is Wind Week, if it's like really really high single target like meme or which has like unforgiving damage mechanics like the meme against DOT teams then Black Swan falls off reasonably as well. Overall she's not broken by any means at E0 but she's not terrible either and she does pair quite nicely with Kafka so I think it's fine for her to be a half a tier below Kafka when Kafka doesn't need her. Yo Hippo I remember back then you were like yo fuck ER on Clara and you should run speed boots. Would you still okay, stand okay. by this take? No no no. no. Okay, okay wait wait ER rope is still oh, terrible. Yo, yo. ER, ER rope is still terrible don't get me wrong but okay. speed boots was like legitimately fine but there's no reason to do it now like it's just griefing it because you're moving at sparkle speed anyway okay okay sure 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 i would move claire down to a minus just because the enemies don't attack enough on phase one but i understand if your claire is cracked and you're running her with sparkle and ting yun she's gonna be able to perform pretty well i think Black Swan, although she is overrated, Hippo has a hate for dot units. And chat also thinks she should be S minus. I think she should be S minus. But A plus, we can meet in the middle. Topaz, she goes well with ratio, but she's not ratio's best in slot. And as a solo DPS, she doesn't do great things. Sadly, at E0, S1, she's locked behind that E1, S1. So we put her in S plus just because of the meme and because she can support Dr. Ratio or Dr. Ratio can support her in that King Kong. Black Swan should be in OP tier. Shut the fuck up, alright. Mostly, uh, I agree with all the stuff. Clara, solid, buff by Sparkle, really good, even though there's not a lot of weakness. That's why she's an A+. If there was physical weakness, uh, she would probably be in S tier. Topaz, Ratio, nothing to add on. Black Swan, I pretty much agree with the A+, placement. It's like, her single target, like, it's okay, but it's not great, which is why, even against Meme, which is the side with win weakness, she's just alright. Like, she's decent for, like, consistent clear, but she's not really that good for a fast clear. And because of the fact that she's somewhat Eidolon dependent, it's honestly just, it's okay. Which is why I'm fine with her just being in A+. I actually agree with Sarah for the most part. Like, Clara, normally I rank Clara, like, among, like, the lower tier limited DPS, not this high. But, uh, the gate specifically, like, the Oromaton Gatekeeper, is actually one of her best elites in all of MOC. Because she forces the, like, you can force the advance forward and you just get free, uh, enhanced counter procs and you also get the death shred which is really nice on top of it uh like the last moc that actually had the gate i don't know what was like 1.4 or something was also one of the mocs that she performed the best in and she was actually able to zero cycle that side as she is on the current one as well yeah normally the moc elites aren't great for her but the gate specifically is quite good all right let's go on to a minus our genti Qingxue sambo and so on. we got a lot of erudition here right? our genti well i mean there's mobs in the first phase uh, with the aromaton when he spawns his fish but there's not a lot of physical weakness which is why honestly he's just he's, he's all right okay well me he could be b plus he's around b plus a minus we decided to like he still did enough so he's in a minus yeah not much else to say now ching chue oh yeah by the way she's not uh, going to see here by end of this uh, 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 you guys are not coming next episode but yeah continue i'm just kidding okay 
I've been saying QQ F tier since last tier list, by the way. To be fair, we are all okay. All for I'm pretty sure we all hate QQ here. He's only here for the formalities, right? Is she? Is she? Uh, is there formalities? I don't see any formalities for 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 okay. for anyone else, man. Just the leader. Okay. <laughs> all right. Give me the editor role and I'll move her down the C tier. Okay, what is the reasoning behind you, you guys placing on A minus previously? Grab me A minus because like it's okay. Like her performance is still uh, alright. When she does perform, her performance is actually not bad. Even though it's off element, she can still, as shown by Pokey, although it's incredibly painful and it's something that he probably doesn't want to remember anymore. It is possible to zero cycle with her on first phase, so she's okay. Which is why we we have her at A minus. Kindly refer to Mr. Then, Pokey losing the four four row four tower. 10 times in a row. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, continue. Yeah, best Tintra build, by the way. <clears throat> Postco Shampoo. He's okay here, just because uh, against Meme, he has a lot of weakness break units with his skill, which is why he's actually ranked probably much higher than normally he would be. Against Meme, he's rather consistent. There's a lot of break units. That's why he's here. Serval, uh, it's, it's mainly because there's lightning weakness in the first half, and also with the Aromaton, because it spawns the fish, and so we, you, you have like a five target scenario. She performs quite well there as well, and thanks to the defense trick, she can obviously get some pretty fast cycle clears, which, so that's why she's up here in A minus. Wait, before you jump this, Sarah, I just want to say one quick thing. Sample over Blade to me is fucking wild. Okay, but it's just me. Uh, as well as well, actually. A minus is pretty good, except for QQ. I would move her down to C tier. She's a dog shit unit. If you can spend three skill points every time and get Arataki and proc it and throw the four of a kind, she's the best DPS in the game. However, you're not going to do that, so she's dog shit. B is too good for her. Everybody else I'm fine with in A minus. I just think maybe some others should move down or maybe one or two should move up. Argenti is a pog unit, but nobody uses him. Even off full element, he can one cycle, just like Jing Yuan with a sustain. I mean, rank one element. Argenti hater, by the way. Okay, continue. I called this character dog shit when he came out on the energy blessing, and I'll call him dog shit today as well. Because saying he's clearing off element is a little bit disin disingenuous. I mean, the side one is almost, I mean, the Gepard is Fizz weak, and part is like the, the highest HP enemy on that stage. But overall, uh, Argenti, this guy's usage fell off a fucking cliff with the removal of the energy MOC blessing and this is this is both in the EN and the CN community he has by far the single lowest usage rate among any five star DPS in the game and I wonder why that is uh, as for QQ for me this this character always has like reasonably high damage ceiling but the RNG factor is always going to make me dock off at least like half a tier which I think is fair because no one wants to be sitting and resetting just for her RNG even though you already have the build supports and the necessary gear to get your clears Sampo for the most part is just a black swan downgrade he's not terrible as far as the 4-star dot supports go, on the current MOC, he is probably just the best. I mean, Luka needs you to RNG fish with Silverwolf on the first side, which is not great. So Sampo is like reasonably consistent, and side 2 is fully wind weak, so he's not bad. And Serval is more or less, I mean, just Jing Yuan from Wish. Side 1 is fully lightning weak, the, the gate spawns the fish for her to kill and also get the death down. She clears reasonably fast because it's fully lightning weak, and she uses the hyper carry supports quite nicely. But she's not really a better option than the aforementioned DPS. If Hippo is rank two rank sorry rank one argenti hater i'm rank two i do i do posted this guy even before his release and i'm glad i was right i i fucking hate this guy so much he is he is like holy shit i, I can't even put into words how bad he is in my eyes to put it more simply yes he has ting yun and and for her to buff up his energy stuff but like are you really gonna wait there for three turns or and to just unleash one ultimate that may not even kill everything because let's be real 80 percent of his entire damage is from his ultimate and it's not even gonna one shot the at the bosses or elites you have to wait like at least two two ultimates and most Argenti players I've seen, their Argentines aren't built really to the best it could be. So maybe it could even be three ultimates to kill the boss, who knows. So yeah, that, that's my thing on Argenti. For QQ, but it's the end. I think that's irrelevant. Oh yeah, yeah, Wait, okay. that, that's just, that's just the like a thing. Wait, the build thing kind of irrelevant because this is an end game list. Yeah, okay, okay. That, that, that usually take, it'll take like around like two ultimates. Yeah, you're just being for... fucking biased, my man. Okay, but continue. Okay, for QQ, I'm personally not a fan of RNG fishing. I, I, I enjoy her personality, but it's it's just way too much of a headache to play her. If you want to sit there for 12 hours farming, Altaki farming, four of a kind, then sure, you do whatever you want. But it's just not something enjoyable in my eyes. For Sampo, 
um, since his weakness breaking capabilities are so good, since there's like nothing to bounce off of, Meme is just Meme himself, unless he summons the pillars thing, um, he is just doing overall really solid damage. His damage is somewhat comparable to Black Swan's, even though Black Swan has the Arcana and defense down. Sample with his uh, dot vulnerability and the insane break damage just puts him quite high in my eyes. And for Servo, I think, I think I'm fine with Servo being A-. I actually wanted her to be A+. Like, like I said, I half agree with Sarah on, on the servo part, but since uh, Hippo and and Toon sort of disagreed, so we met in the middle and put her in A minus. Okay, I feel like generally A minus, you guys are all like more or less on the same page, so I don't think we need to cook because I feel like the main point, or rather the main point that Chair is really not happy is that Blade of all people that is lower than Sampo, so let's cook B+. Plus. Okay, B- minus and C, honestly, we can just we can just like kind of ignore them. Although there's a lot of win week on second half, Blade's single target damage is just like, it's basically non-existent. If we were facing a 3 elite MOC instead of Meme, Blade would be like probably like A plus or like at least A minus if it was win weak. But since it's meme, Wait, that's not since it's meme Wait, and it's a single target boss and Blade's single target damage is like really 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 low. Sampo can actually output more single target damage than Blade. By the way, I'm I'm just saying. So yeah, really? Yeah yeah. I I've seen okay. uh I've seen Sampo on like 3.5k attack, 134 speed, do like 80k skill on on the meme itself and Blade normal basic attack on one target is like probably like 50k. So you're saying so Sampo, yeah. as a hyper carry Sampo, he clears faster than hyper carry Blade? Oh no, I'm not saying that. I don't have any like source to, to back that up. So yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so for Welt, uh, same thing with Sampo, except well, it's just a little bit worse. Because Welt's main detriment to his damage is the bouncing thing, right? So since this time it's just one target, Welt's bounce can only bounce on Meme. And since Welt's bounce also does a lot of toughness damage, that's why he's, uh, he's up there. Otherwise, I would actually put him in C. Like, honestly, Welt is just like not very good in my opinion. But since it's imaginary weakness and there's not really too many things for him to bounce on, Welt is pretty pretty good uh, this MOC. Then for Shrey, I don't really have any opinion on Shrey because I've genuinely never done any research, any fuse crafting, any theory crafting at all on this character. I'm just completely uninterested on her. So yeah, I'm, okay. I don't have any takes on her. Yeah, cool. Okay, before I move on to Hippo, I just want to say, the reasoning for well being slightly better because there's a less target to bounce to end like imaginary weakness, then why wouldn't he be placed higher since technically now he's, he's, he's like in his end one, especially since both halves, they are like weak to imaginary. Uh, Zara doesn't have to answer that. Anyone else can answer this? Uh, no, I can't answer it. Oh, Actually, I'm gonna be honest, right? We focus a lot more on like the higher tiers. And so for this one, it was like we took less. Oh, and okay, okay. Like, I'm, I've, I've been looking at this for like uh, a bit and then I'm, I'm reflecting a little bit more. And I'm thinking, right, we can potentially raise Welt and Blade and pull down Team Chat and Argenti. Hey, no I am way. completely unobjected to that. Okay, hey, no way. There's a reason Welt is in B, and that's because Wave 1 has five enemies and his bounce is dog shit and if he's E0 he doesn't get enough energy clear that way fast enough unless your build is cracked out of your gourd. I mean well it's B plus too. Well yeah but you're talking about moving him up. I'm just well, saying why we can't move him up because wave one of the meme fight has five enemies and his bounce is dog shit against five enemies. No it's not five enemies though it's like it's at most four enemies and it's only if the guy spawns his stuff and if you kill it before the guy spawns his stuff then it's only two enemies. Yeah, dude, E0 Wells is killing shit. I think with, with Blade, I think the point that's being missed by Chad especially is that we're not saying Blade is a worse hyper carry than Sampo. Like, that's not what we're trying to say. It's just that Sampo kind of gets carried by dot damage, right? And you guys know I'm I'm the biggest dot hater, Sarah said it. I outed myself with Black Swan, but both Kafka Sampo and Black Swan Sampo are both better against the meme than Blade. Like, I think no one's saying Sampo plus Ron May plus Bronya is better than Blade. But Blade is, with current MOC, destruction characters just struggle with single target damage in general, except Liu because she's broken and Blade also doesn't use the MOC blessing very well like he's one of the worst users in the entire game of it so Blade is just really crippled. Welt, Welt is a character I get the feeling like the same feeling as Black Swan where a lot of people just like assume E2 as the baseline. When I tell when I talk to people about Welt like like Welt isn't that great at DPS they're like E2 Welt is good, E6 Welt is good like who the hell is talking about this? We're, we're only looking at E0 S1 as, as a baseline on these characters and as far as E0 goes like Welt is objectively just not a good DPS I'm sorry to say it if you like him. Uh, as far as GOE, when like when it comes to like quantum, like uh, Sele or QQ, I think Mono Quantum is an absolutely dog shit steaming pile of crap team. But for GOE, the fact that you can force the quantum implant 
you get the quantum breaks with the massive amounts of break effect as well as the tremendous amounts of uh, free damage that she gets inherently from her kit. The Zhui Yi team is performing reasonably well, even off element, just because you just force the quantum implant. But for Sele, dude, Sele Silver Wolf is not. I mean, I, I will not speak. Sele Silver Wolf is fucking terrible. Okay, okay. Wait, before we go on to to Sarah, wait. Doesn't Blade benefit quite a bit since there's a basic attack damage buff? Yeah, but he doesn't he doesn't stack like the so a lot of characters currently are abusing like the percentage health ticks with uh, stacking up like the SP consumption. Ah, uh, okay. Especially against like Sam and Meme, like you can see like 500k ticks yep. when you get like a 10 stacker, and Blade just cannot stack it to save his life. Uh, I have something to say. Sure. Uh, 50 plus 50 percent on zero damage. It's still zero. All right, getting canceled. All right, uh, Sarah, go for it. <laughs> I'm going to propose we make a change here. I think we should move Serval up to A+, and we should move Blade up to A-. minus. That's what chat thinks resoundingly. And after seeing the unlimited Blade Works, which is not a comp that I've seen Blade do, on the meme. I think that comp could work on the meme to where he moves up into A minus. As long as you run a sustain and you run super fast sparkle, super fast Branya, you're gonna get your ticks and Blaze actually gonna do something and take enough turns to where he can maybe get through that health bar. Okay. You sound real confident. Sorry, sorry, I just, before that, right, instead of bumping Serval up, why about we just swap QQ and Blade? I, I feel like that's more agreeable. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. I don't mind. I, sure, I'm fine with that. Okay. Uh, I honestly don't mind. Sure, I'm fine with that. QQ. Okay. Alright. Chat, chat was saying I'm a blade hitter. Nah, bro. I've defended blade until I literally cannot defend him anymore. I, I no, can't I'm the blade hater. Yeah, Sorry. Hippo is the blade hater. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've been defending yeah, blade. The blade hater. I've uh, been did, defending yeah. blade since, since the start of his hate train and I can't, I can't do any more, man. He is a part-time Wait, Hippo, did you- wait, wait, did you affect TT or was it TT infecting you? Like, wh wait, who started about, hating Blade first? Who started hating both Blade? of you just wait, start? No, 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 TT, TT likes Blade, what? Like, he likes the character, he just thinks he's shit. Oh, okay, so it's- it's- it's basically you, though. No, but TT has a cracked build, have you seen his build? And it just does not pump. Doesn't uh, TT have an E6 Blade? No, E0, E1, E1, E1. No, 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 E1, 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 S1. It's like a 90 to 20 Blade, and it just does not do damage. Sounds like skill issue. For well, he just has that issue with wave one if it was just wave two and he was just against the meme he'd be pretty solid um and then Zhui Yi in the monum quantum team the reason that she's in b plus is just because we didn't have any room in b minus and c so she got the default b plus because she's the best out of the ones below her he's moved up in the world yeah yeah uh, yep. he's a minus now uh talking about blade but okay, i i don't have much to like, touch on he's just like he's He's very consistent with his DPS. It's win the MOC, and since Chat also agrees, and of course, and previously I also like mentioned this uh, after Zarya, I, I do feel like he could be moved up to A-man. So I think he's where he deserves to be. Okay. Xue Yi, I don't have much to say. QQ, I've already said what I needed to say. Welt. Now, I am okay with him staying in B+, even though uh, I did advocate for him to be raised up. The reason why I'm okay with it is because the tier list considers sustain. The thing is, because Welt, best teams most of the time you're not running sustain you're running three supports which is why if we if i'm considering well teams with only two supports and a sustain then i can see him just remaining in b plus even in this moc but if it were to be more so on the three support teams i initially advocated for him to be raised up into the tiers okay but i don't think that's very fair because like everybody here if yeah. everybody's still on triple support then it doesn't really make sense so yeah we have to keep it there consistent. yeah yeah wait, wait, wait. yeah which is why i, I feel like, which is why although I personally, I love this character because, well, I, I, I'm a Hong Kong Infected player and I fucking love Welp because he's such a full character. But taking into consideration supports, sustain, yeah, B plus is fair for him, I think. Okay, I feel like the breadth of B minus and C from MOC, we don't really need to talk about it that much. And uh, I guess just some closing thoughts about the MOC tier list from OP all the way up to, to B plus. Uh, okay, I'll just start, I guess. So in my eyes, the best DPS are the ones that are performing on side two, just because it's objectively, I think, the harder side. Uh, I'm also looking at the DPS that are abusing the blessing, like IL with the SP stacking and just getting a massive like 10 stacker into a high HP boss like the meme. And yeah, I mean, with the two supports restriction, a lot of clearing capabilities for characters goes down, which made like making the list a lot easier because not every character can zero cycle and it, then it just becomes an arbitrary zero to cycle discussion. So I think overall, it's more or less a fair representation of what's possible in the current MOC. So I say this MOC has been 
It's much easier to like gauge how good units are. It's much more straightforward than the last one. So I think there were there, there there's gonna be less debate, especially now with the change on the different placements. And I'm quite happy with like uh, where it is right now. Okay, so anyone is not happy. Okay. I'm then. not happy with Ching Yuan and S minus, but you know it is what it is. Okay, we're gonna move on. Um. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, we're gonna... <laughs> honestly, pure fiction, I personally don't really want to care about it that much. So I just want to talk about like in general, like MOC in general, because pure fiction is, is very, very heavily buff dependent. So if you have follow up attacks, you're going to be really, really good. Uh, Jing Yuan is doing really good. Uh, so I don't really want to... Let's just skip pure fiction. Also, I don't want this to be like three hours long. Uh, support, I really, really want you guys to like... Because I'm intending to use this as an opportunity to really settle the Bronya versus Sparkle debate. Right? And Sarah's profile picture is literally oh. Runmei versus Ting Yun. So please cook support, right? So from Toon Hub. All right, here's the big one. Here's the... The, the, the true drama bay. <clears throat> Alright, run mate. Still, pretty much, I would say is undisputed support. Except for uh, one thing I'll touch upon later. But honestly, you know, very solid buffs. Even even at E0. A uh, very nice S1, uh, which is pretty much almost like another half a character. Or maybe even like a full character, to be honest. So that's why she's an OP. Uh, S plus, we have our latest limited 5-star harmony, Sparkle. She's obviously very good. I think it's been proven. And in my opinion, the Sparkle versus Bronya debate in 90% of cases, Sparkle is just a better Bronya. The only cases where you can argue Bronya over her is Jing Liu, Blade, and that's pretty much it. Other than that, it's Sparkle is just better in almost every other case. And of course, Ting Yun being higher than Bronya. Now this is an interesting one, right? Ever since the start of the game, Ting Yun has been a very solid, very good 4-star support. And obviously her alone, just her kit, is very good. Energy giving is universal for pretty much everyone, for now at least. Unless someone somehow that pretty much is yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> The reason why I she's higher than Bronya, or at least like me personally, I would say she can either be same tier or slightly higher. It's not even because of like the character herself, but it's because of how well she utilizes S5 dance, dance, dance. I swear to God, this light code is crazy. Like I genuinely feel S5 dance, dance, dance with the E6 team unit is probably the common denominator I see in almost every single zero cycle video. And so with that being said, that's the top four. Uh, also just reminder this. Is not a zero cycle tier list. This is the end game meta tier list. So even if the unit clears in like one, two cycles, but it cleared really, really well, um, that is gonna justify the rankings. In regards to the comfiest support you will ever play, it is slow Ron May at 120 speed with Von Wack, Break Rope, her light cone. You sit her, she goes. You don't have to think about it. Your team goes. Her buffs just stay there. You don't need the skill. You don't need to mess with speed tuning other than getting her to 120. So she just sits there and she provides equal buffs to Sparkle and Branya, and she always has. And break efficiency is underrated. Comfiest support. Moving on to Sparkle versus Branya. Sparkle is better in every case, except for Jing Liu, because she is better with Blade. I know that's crazy, but she is technically better with Blade. So that's why Branya has to move down to S minus. Value wise, I don't think Sparkle's worth pulling because Branya exists, and you're going to get her in the selector. And then Ting Yun. Ting Yun's always been there for Mr. Pokey. Ting Yun's always been there for anybody going for low cycle clears. I'm not talking about the body pillow. Ting Yun is arguably one of the best supports in. She's nearly irreplaceable with S5 Dance Dance Dance. If you don't have Dance Dance Dance, get better, pull better. Real, real. Starting with Ron May, I think there's not too much argument here. She is just the unconditional, most comfortable support. You can throw her into every single team and she makes it better no matter what. Uh, a few people in the village know that I'm a big fan of slow Ron May without using one whack, just because uh, it has no speed requirement on the DPS at all to make sure they stay ahead of Ron May. And it's also better in wave two with a buffing set at the cost of not having having one run may alt buff turn in wave one but i digress as far as like the ting yun versus Bronya, i think personally they could have been on the same tier like i don't really think it's that big a difference between the two of them Bronya, like the main use for her right now is definitely as a partner to jing liu she is the single best uh jing liu support in the game along with run may and the pairing just works really well as well as far as sparkle so we touched about upon this a little bit earlier but this character is completely broken if you're able to push her limits which is basically to say if you can get her to 200 speed now for a lot of people they think that that's actually uh like way too much speed and it's not actually realistic but there is a tech that i need to 
uh, shout out my oh, my homies comes, in, Gr in Grim Server that we cooked up in Grim Server is that you can play Ting Yun plus Sparkle in the same team with Ting Yun on DDD and in Wave 2 you can ult Ting Yun like you can self ult with DDD and then you get a second ult for two DDD advances in the same wave and with that you can get Sparkle to 200 from way way less speed than what most calcs and most sheets show and it's not even a damage loss because you only get one Ting Yun ult anyway so there's actually no downside to it. Insane. This tag is actually insane. It shaved a cycle off of uh, Dio's uh, seal clear after your uh, oh. account audit I'm yesterday. When I first heard it, I didn't believe it. Then I, tr then I saw an opportunity to try it in one of my clips. I tried it and I was like, oh shit. And they act. This is a very insane cook. It's a very good cook. And I think it's something that like, hasn't really been touched upon yet. So we want to bring light to this revolutionary technique with Ting Yun. So it's like a pseudo two dance dance dance, but you actually have one dance dance because you sell out, mm -hmm. basically. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yep. pretty much. Insane, insane. Yeah, that's actually insane. Good shit, man. Am I the only relatable player here? I don't have S5 DDD. All right, you're, okay. you're, you're not coming next <laughs> anyway. episode. That's anyway, okay. um, I don't really have anything to talk about run, man. Like, everything... It's kind of obvious and it's really been said. Um, I want to talk about the Sparkle versus Boronia thing though. I have been converted. I I now agree with Sarah that Ting Yu is actually better than Bronya simply because Sparkle basically takes Bronya's job and does it better. Because the 50% actual forward is literally identical to Bronya's 100% actual forward as long as Sparkle is faster than DPS, which is how you should play her anyway. Se secondly, the reason why Bronya actually fell down is because Sparkle, like, like I said, just takes a job. So now Bronya is only better than Sparkle inside of Ting Yu. And although Sparkle uh, took Bronya's job, she didn't take Ting Yu's job. Ting Yun is still Ting Yun. She's still abusing DDD as always. She's still providing energy battery as always. She's still providing insane attack and damage boost as always. There's not really any reason why Ting Yu should go down because of Sparkle. And there are multiple reasons why Bronya should go down. Uh, because of Sparkle, so that's my take. If you guys can sum up the Sparkle versus Bronya debate in one sentence, uh, each of you guys, one sentence. Sparkle made Bronya homeless because she no longer has an income from her job. Sparkle Ting Yun gives you a realistic way to get three turns on DPS, running attack boots and zero speed subs, which is completely broken. Sparkle is a marginal improvement over Branya. However, you have to switch your boots to attack boots and you're probably going off of your orb and rope combo Glamoth because every CC told you to build Glamoth and it's a trap domain. But she is technically better than Branya. She's not worth a pull. Sparkle better than Branya. But I mean, you can just use Bronya on the other side. I think that's a pretty interesting debate. I'm just going to let the YouTube comments stew and cook and see what we come up with. Probably going to get like 50% dislike. But anyways, moving on to A+. Plus, uh, okay, yeah, A+. Plus. Okay, let's just talk about A. So we have Pera, Silver Wolf, A+, plus, outside A-. minus. Um, so for this MOC specifically, Silver Wolf is actually on par with Pella because it's more single target focus. Silver Wolf uh, enables uh, a few comms, like for example, Mono Quantum. Although uh, Hippo hates it, I think it's I don't think it's good. I think it's usable. I I don't hate it. Uh, and Silver Wolf also enables Luca, especially for this MOC, because uh, there's no physical weakness except for Japan. So with Silver Wolf, they're implanting for Luca. Luca is still outputting like relatively respectable damage as long as he, uh, they have the physical uh, weakness. The only downside about Silver Wolf uh, compared to Pella is that Silver Wolf can't get her out uh, instantly uh, from, from her first turn, like unlike Pella. So she can't just skill and get her the ultimate. She has to wait for the second turn, which is kind of unfortunate. But if your units are well, built well enough, you don't really need to out on the first turn, which is why I think she's actually on par with Pella, although she has that one detriment. But if it was in a more AoE or even blast focused MOC, she's definitely worse than Pella. And Pella is on the same tier as a wolf because I've really basically explained it. They're just as good as, as each other, this MOC. Asta basically got, got the Bronya treatment from for Ran Mei. Ran Mei just basically made Asta unemployed. She doesn't really have any role to play in any uh, comms anymore. She used to be she used to be in Ting Yuan and DOT comms, but now she has been overshadowed by quite a bit by Ran Mei. So that's why she, she's still in the A minus tier. And the only reason why she's in the A minus tier is because she's better than the than the three units. Sorry, the, the, the two units below. Okay, yep. 
Pella, she is an amazing secondary support that you pair along with any of like the broken harmonies like Ting Yun or Bronya. I don't think she's quite on the same level, but she does like complement them extremely well. Anyone who uses Pella knows that there's no team that she's really bad in. She's just not always going to be the best option. If you guys were here last time, I mean, Pokey knows, you guys know, I'm a Silver Wolf hater. This unit is bad at E0, but against in this MOC specifically, her problems are sort of fixed. So Silver Wolf's main issues are the fact are related to her ultimate, which is hard to generate and also completely single target but against the meme in site 2 of MOC both of these problems are fixed because the meme is a massive like single target HP sponge and it also refreshes your ult for you which is one of the biggest weaknesses for Silver Wolf against like double HP bar bosses which is pretty much the only reason I have her on the same tier. As far as Asta, Yukong, Hanya go, I mean I don't really have much to say about them. Yukong especially got completely power crept by Sparkle in every single team that she was even considered remotely viable in. She's just not used anymore so like I don't think there's too much to say with the other three. Kayla is great because she can get her ult on her first turn. Silver Wolf had to get moved down because she can't get her ult on her first turn. If Silver Wolf could skill and then ult on turn one, she would be S minus or S plus, but she can't. So sadly, she's an A plus. Single target lock. Rip Bozo. Okay, wait, before we move to top, I just want to quickly say, um, technically speaking, you could one turn, uh, turn one out if you run a run basic and then you run silver wolf like for the yeah technically yeah but okay if you're yeah. e1 yeah if you're e1 not if you're e0 no e0 can do yeah e0 can e0 can do it yeah e0 can do it yeah e1 doesn't doesn't matter for the thing Hella, solid support, very good single target AOE, death shred is very nice. Not as good as all the harmonies, but she's very consistent, performs quite well. Silver Wolf, my thoughts on Silver Wolf. Like the Silver Wolf versus Pella debate. There are some cases better, but the cases where Pella is better than Silver Wolf are much more than the cases where Silver Wolf and, and, and much like and less specific than the cases where Silver Wolf is better than Pella. Which is and, oh and also Silver Wolf's best light cone is one that you new players cannot no longer get anymore which is well it's, it's kind of sad but it is what it is right so this moc specifically yeah these two are about equal asta yeah uh it's basically what zarya said right she's she's out of the job and it is what it is from me it's just better i feel like b b plus and b minus we don't really need to say that much because it's not really they're not really that close so we can kind of keep it so to wrap up support is there any like massive disagreements over anything here so far or is everyone like more or less in unison yep it's yep. good i think yep sarah all good so now we come to the last segment which is also going to be pretty quick i get i believe sustain let's just combine same thing we'll combine op with s plus s minus once again we have <clears throat> the goat the undisputed goat the harmony who also sustains and cleanses Honestly, I don't think it's a much of a debate. She is the best sustain. Sure, some people think that Fushion is best, but honestly, it's like, bro, it's, you're just using Fushion because you can't live otherwise. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <clears throat> but still, regardless, Fushion, still good. Uh, definitely, in terms of pure sustain-wise, she is the best. <laughs> but overall team value, she is not as good as Hoho, even though she does give the team white crit rate buff. But she's still good enough for like, she's in her tier of her own compared to everyone else. S plus. And then S minus, lower char. Even though he's uh, not as good as the two people above him, he still does a shit ton of healing. And she still sustains your team really well. If there were more bosses with like annoying buffs, such as the Disciple of Sanctus Medicus, right? He might be bumped up to be equal to Fushion, depending on how detrimental the buff is. But for now, I think he's exactly where he uh, should be, S minus. Still very solid, still sustains quite well. Yeah, that's all I have to say. I feel like, honestly, I feel like this is this is pretty fair. But I, um, what about A and. Because I, I think there, there's quite a bit of. Sorry, Sarah, you're saying? Um, so there is an argument for Fushuan to be the OP, okay. and that's for the comfortability because 12% crit rate is pretty big. Um, Hoho is skill point neutral when she's E0. If she's E1, it's a clear, like clear T or above. Honestly, they're so neck and neck in outside of zero cycle clears. I think Fushuan may take it, but in those lower clears, Hoho is better just because of the energy charge. Okay, yeah, I think that's very, very fair. Yeah, I think that's very, very fair, especially for comfort. I, I do want to see if you guys have... Because um, I think previously, like, I think quite a lot of tier lists, like, made by other content creators, Bailu Japart 
Lynx seems to be a little bit um, in debate. Uh, I mean, this MLC doesn't really have any negative status effects to cleanse. Like, it's not like the last one with the Kafka and the Stun on Wave, which was really, really toxic to play against without a, without a easy to access cleanse. So, like for this MLC, which is just like raw upfront damage for the most part, Lynx is just way worse than the five star sustains. Bailu heals more and also gives you the really nice damage reduction and the uh, like the reliability of the revive in case anything goes wrong. I mean, at this point, we're we're talking about sustains that have no offensive utility already. So we can only discuss like the comfort factor and like how reliable they are. And for that purpose, like I think Lynx is pretty bad. And I don't think Gepard is like a very good sustain either for like similar reasons. But in terms of like not wiping and not having accidents, he's still better than Lynx in this case when there's no risk of like CC ruining his his shield uptime. So I don't think there's anything too controversial with these rankings here. Personally, I think Bailu's the only one that deserves to be an A tier because Bailu is pretty decent against the meme because there's no heavy CC statuses. Uh, she's also a good side one because she's lightning. So if you're running Civil Wolf, she doesn't fuck up the implants. Honestly, I would move Japard down to B, but we have a firm Japard believer in the channel who decided that he deserves to be A minus. Mm -hmm. ba Bailu's kind of, kind of really good right now because of the damage reduction. Uh, a lot of people like forget about the 35% damage reduction that, that she gets on, on the invigoration. And a lot of people just write her off as like just like a worst watcher basically. Uh that has that has RNG healing, no cleanse, etc. But then they they forget about the 35% damage reduction, which is basically like a mini fusion. It prevents you from dying and it prevents you from getting one shot basically. I was actually advocating for Japat being on par with uh Bailu in A plus. But Hippo made a very good point about Japat stealing hit energy uh, because his, his main role is to tank, is to take hits, is to gain energy for a shield so he can like spam the shield. But Hippo made a really good point uh, in, uh, in the group chat about how uh, him being a tank is actually a, a direct detriment to your team because uh, your teammates aren't getting hit and surviving so that they can generate uh, hit energy. So for example, that's why Fushen is very good because Fushen can keep your team alive while still not taking all the hits away from your teammates. So they get extra energy basically. Wait, so yeah, that's... why Why would you, why would she do? Because are, are they not both preservation? No, no they're, pre they're both preservation, but Japan is enhanced taunt. He has the taunt trace. Ah, okay, okay. And also MOV gives him even more taunt. I just don't think Japard is A minus tier. Okay, yeah. Bailu, honestly, uh, has been still pretty consistent, you know. People write her off just because she doesn't have a cleanse, but right now, cleanse isn't really needed for this MOC. Oh my god, bro, he's cursing them. <laughs> Subscribe to Pokey or he will curse your roles, right? So, Bailu is still a pretty decent sustain, especially this MOC when there's not a lot of like negative debuffs that need to be cleansed. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the person who used to be above her, uh, King Pai, has sort of fallen off. I think, it, honestly, I feel like part, part of it is due to the fact that like uh, we're moving from MOC 10 to MOC 12, the amount of damage the enemies do is much more. So you have to make Japan's shields tankier if you want to perform at the level that he did when we still had MOC 10. I went into a MOC 12 with an unbuilt Japan because I forgot I stripped him and he sustained completely fine with a shield that was shielding 1.6k. So yeah, oh, yeah, something to consider. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Maybe uh, it was fine, right? But it's it's slightly less reliable. I'll just leave that as like a small point or like a, a food for thought. All right. But yeah, I do agree that uh, in terms of sustaining, Bailu is, 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 is better, especially for meme. And yeah, honestly, not that much more to add. I think we're just about wrapping up, right? And since it's like, okay, it's still, okay, it's 11.56, it's still, <laughs> just wanted to say, right? Happy March 7th, everybody. Insane. Uh, and I actually want to use this opportunity. I feel like we should have done this opportunity in the previous tier list um, discussion as well, which is the four of you guys, you're going to go against Chad. Okay, so now we're going to have the... Okay, wait, where's the where's the name again? All right. If, if Chad has any like specific questions to the to the meta players, feel free to, to ask them specifically as well. So yeah, have, have fun guys. I think this is gonna be very, very fun. Cause this is gonna probably be the simulation of what's gonna happen on the YouTube comments as well. So, okay, go for it. Guys, is Miss Foki single? She's so, they're so fucking fine. <laughs> oh, okay, wait, uh, you know what? I'll just change my, I'll just change my thingy. Let me change my thingy. Oh, this is for Pokey actually. 
Oh, sure. I can answer that. Uh, let me just pull up this real quick. All right, all right. Yeah, I feel like using a PNG model is going to increase my reliability amongst chat. So I feel like that's going to be the, the main thingy over here. Yeah, all right. Uh, Techno seems to like it. All right, so uh, in my opinion, a a slow runme and a fast runme, the main difference is basically your buff coverage as well as how fast you can get by your ultimate. And generally speaking, if you're going to be clearing a stage in like even two to three cycles, First of all, being slow means your buff just naturally extends to a longer duration. Second of all, if you change the break if arrow means you're obviously going to do more damage to your breaks. Third of all, even without ER rope, you can kind of just gamble away on the RNG. Yeah, maybe you lose the ultimate like by one turn. But in the grand scheme of things, because the coverage is almost identical, you basically change out more damage for slightly less uptime. And this slightly less uptime is not going to be very pronounced, especially since your team comp is now dealing more damage with the break runway. So this goes even beyond zero cycles. Like even when I showcased just now, even when my runway's buffs expired while running slow runway, literally the next turn, you'll get it back out game. So in my opinion, trading this for dealing like 100% more break for way more damage is worth it in my opinion and even more worth it as your team slowly progress to deal more and more damage and eventually get the zero to one cycle clip so yep that's it it doesn't work that way because your run me is always just gonna be plus one it's not even like plus two plus three plus four it's like no matter how fast you get maybe throughout five waves five cycles you at most get back like one or two more because fundamentally she's plus one it's whether you get this plus one faster or sooner and 120 versus like let's just say you have 160 it's not like the 160 build you, you yeah what black swan should be op tier black swan should be op tier is that what chat is saying or what no that's what i'm saying oh, oh, no that's what the... she's saying he's oh, okay. just he's a massive symbol yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah can the e1 break the e1 s1 brain rock goes crazy man. i'm sure tactone will agree with me that black swan should be op wait i, I see a lot of Sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Retreat the Dreamer. Ask people why he said that Black Swan is overrated if we talk about E0S or so with endgame builds and the best teammates. Uh, I think E0, like, okay, so I'll break this down. I think a lot of people who have E1 Black Swan are the ones who say E0 Black Swan is good, which I think is just complete. I mean, like, then why do you have E1? Like, it's complete, like, whale brain, like, oversight. And as far as, like, why I think E0 Black Swan is overrated, I mean, show me the clears. Show me the clears. Like, Black Swan does not keep up with the hyper carries in the current stages at E0 and I I don't know which part about that is a like subjective or like hater yeah I'm a dot hater but I don't know how you can hold that against me when she literally cannot keep up with the meta hyper carries at E0 also restricted dreamer that guy's a Kafka simp dude you can't call me out for being biased okay perfect wow. as a silver enjoyer I agree the outing on the first time without jumping through hopes this really hurts do you guys think this has become much easier for her then she would be redeemed I think on the first turn like if Silver can out on the first turn do you guys, oh. do you guys think she'll be S, S tier? no I mean she already I mean, can like that would yeah, yeah but you like... have to do very specific things for her to I mean, be able without to the end. hoop jumping I if mean... she was able to out on the first turn I feel like she'll be much better than than right now but that's just how I feel right? the way I see it is like the harder part of any stage tends to be the second wave which is also the wave which has like either multiple like high HP elites or elites which have like multiple HP bars and Silver Wolf ulting on the first turn does not fix that in any capacity. Who do you guys think is the best character in Star Wars and why is it Sparkle? Run May. It's not. It's Run May. It's always been Run May, even yeah, when these haters. It's, yeah, it's, it's Run May. Go for reruns and idolins or go for new units? Depends on the new unit. Yeah, it really it depends. depends on the idolon. It really depends, yeah. like honestly. If, and your if, account. If you're, if you're competing between pulling Argenti or pulling E2 deal, I think it's quite self explanatory. If you're for some reason deciding between pulling Qingren E1 or Acheron, then like, okay, don't pull Qingren's Eidolons because honestly, they're all kind of bad. They're all kind of dog shit. It, yeah, it's really a case-by-case -case basis, genuinely. I'll do you one better. Don't pull Qingren. That is the best Jing Yuan build, is to just not have him on your account. <laughs> Should I build my Dr. Rejo even though he has an E0 deal built? I wouldn't recommend it, honestly. I, I, would, I wouldn't recommend building Rejo if you already have a deal built. Unless you really, really like ratio, in that case, then you already you should have already built him by now. So, I mean, against like imaginary weak elites, ratio tends to be better. But I think it's hard for them to make the game so hard, like imaginary weak, that E zero IL can compete. Like that's gonna require so much power creep that I don't think like building ratio is a priority unless you really like him. Yeah, it's the, it's the investment versus return thing. You already have an imaginary coverage in the form of a build. 
uh, deal uh, building ratio on top of that just to target a different demographic of mobs is not really worth it, especially when deal can still take care of that. Thoughts on how to make dual DPS viable or zero clear dual DPS? Uh, you don't. Simple. I mean, on the current one, like Topaz ratio is pretty good just because like they match up into the meme really well. But yeah, that, current... that's like the only case. Yeah, yeah, like the and... current like yeah. sub DPS options just aren't that good. Like if you look at like Topaz, her personal damage output is way less significant than like the debuffs she gives for ratio. So like the actual like the like the dual DPS fantasy doesn't actually exist in the game currently. I think. Yeah. All right. Rest in peace, EO. Uh, bro, if my spiral combo is trash without running the team, okay, but that's not an argument though. The argument is, I just made things all three used together is trash, and I'm saying it's not trash. Uh, anyways, uh, who has the best sustained idol and why is it Huan Huan? Okay, wait, actually Huan Huan E1 or Fortune E1? I, I don't even know what Ho Ho's E1 does. Give us speed, ho -ho. speed buff and uh, it's, extra talent. It, it's always Ho Ho, in my oh, opinion. Then Ho Ho. Um, noobs see 30% crit damage from E1 Fusion, and they go, and they go monkey brain. And then they don't realize that 30% crit damage is like, it's almost like nothing in the final damage returns. I mean, I'll, I'll put it like this, like if you're looking at like Dolphin Eidolons for like damage creep, there's better ones in the game already. Like Ronmei E1 and Sparkle E1 are both just miles better than Fushuan E1. What the fuck and is Sparkle E1 doing? Oh my god. It's 40% yeah, attack, attack, right? Yeah, yeah. and okay. it, it extends the, the ult buff, which is relevant if you have like advanced DPS. Because okay. the ult actually yeah. runs out. That's pretty fair, that's pretty fair. Yeah, it's, it's and for Ho Ho E1, like, uh, like, it just lets you run attack boots on so many more DPS, which is just so much more damage than speed boots. Just, just, just a quick thing to add, right, about the whole, like, the crit value thing. Remember that for 30 crit damage, it looks nice, right? Uh, it's about the average CV of, like, a good relic that you have is 30 CV. But if you take a look, you assume that you have 200 crit damage. Normally, the 200 crit damage will allow you to do three times more damage. But if you add on the 30%, you actually you're not actually getting you're getting 10%. And basically, people don't really realize that the potency of the crit damage is not actually as they initially think. So, would you rather have like 10% uh, uh, more damage per then, or would you rather or okay? percent or even less if you have a crit damage buff from like Ronya or Sparkle or would you rather have the potential to run attack boots where you have a lot more attack or like perhaps even like with the speed buff you get like a whole extra turn instead okay Tuna so I'm, like gonna, the I'm gonna give it a bad Tuna you, you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta reduce the, you gotta reduce the yet my man you gotta you gotta I swear to fucking okay, god I'm sorry, I'm sorry. you it's, keep it's, talking it's okay yeah 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 okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm a silly appreciator I've heard E2S1 is it worth the E6 no, not at all. No. Her idol has the worst idolons in the game. Yeah. Sadly. E even even going to E2 sparkle. feels kinda kinda bait. Like you got baited if you went to E2, I'm sorry. E6 thing sparkle is better than E6 thing sealer for her damage. Bro, E6 thing sparkle is better than most E6s. Her E6 is E6 ridiculous. sparkle is straight up the best support in the game. And yes, uh -huh. better than run me. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I would, I would, I would uh, really debate that. Uh, 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 really that's that's, that's, that's right, just right. my take, but I, I would say an E6 Sparkle is a better support than all E6 right, Sparkle. Right, yeah, we can have wrong takes here, but yeah, oh, let, let, let's settle down a little bit. Yo, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yo, cool, oh, the E2 City go very interesting. Uh, so, Ray Solo, when I can ignore weakness type. If you can ignore weakness type, you're either a Giga Whale or you're Dinch and you're not clearing as fast as you could be if you were to pay attention to weakness type. Or you play Jingliu. Real. Yep. Well, I mean, Jingliu without her light cone against not Yeah, her I don't want to hear from you under the yeah. blue sky, Jingliu. I don't hey, want to hear from you. Oh, no. Oh, wait, no. wait, Sarah also doesn't have she's still slower. No, Sarah, wait, Sarah doesn't have average yet. Yeah. Oh my Sarah god, doesn't. my relatability is gone. Nah, she didn't. Wait, no, I don't have S1. Zara, you have E0 S1, Jingliu. No, my E0 S0. Oh, okay, okay. I'm a Jingliu main, by the way. Fucking hell. Interesting. Oh, you yeah. made it being poor. I'm just going in-game. Oh, I'm going to get this. You know, I, I, I could be less poor if, if Mr. Choki here, you know, like, gave me $20, you know? You know, you know? The same, the same. Wait, wait, wait. Begging for money, uh. ah, What the hell? Hey, bro. <laughs> Look. I'm, I, I know you're a helper, but you know, begging for money. Wait, where, where, where's this... the copy pasta? Where's the copy pasta? This economy? Oh, we yeah, can't yeah. even get Oreo thins? That's too much, man. 
Oh, genuinely. Bro, yeah. can you help me get Sparkle only easier? I am hard free to play and my parents will disown me if I spend even a dime. I used up my jades for deal at Hard City. Whoa, okay, 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 bro, 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 stop, stop, yeah, stop, yeah, stop, yeah. Nah, nah, don't say the whole thing, man. Come on. All right. One most controversial take from each um, guest that we have here. If chat wanna be so kind. One controversial take. I'm just looking at Sarah's. All right, Sarah is Sarah is Saval and Jingyuan. All right. Okay, Sarah is Saval and Jingyuan. All right, Hippo. All right, Blaine A. What the fuck? He sucks. Hippo is a black swan take. Um, one of them said Mono Quantum was a dog shit team. Okay, that's Hippo as well. <laughs> Hippo's existence. <laughs> 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 that is crazy. Uh, our, our <laughs> so I've always more than well. Uh, okay. Uh, I feel like most of it is is is, is hippo and hippo and Sarah. Are right, you guys wanna try yeah. try addressing it? Yeah. Uh, I'll take them up on it when they outclear me. I have nothing else to say. I spoke my mind. All right. When what out? This is like you? they can speak his, with their his actions. His mindset is just. Like these noobs aren't worth my time, essentially. That's, yeah, nope. that's what Prove me wrong. <laughs> Prove me wrong. Stop <laughs> yapping. It's Geto Suguru. Stop chatting. Prove me wrong. Wait, what are we trying to prove? <laughs> Hippo wrong, huh? Actually crazy. <laughs> Silver Wolf, same tier as Pella. Um, I don't really think that's controversial. I think I think that's pretty fair. Nah, I, I think Pella's like one. That... I think Pella's better, but okay, yeah, continue. <laughs> Yeah, I think Pella's better as yeah, well. Yeah, Pella is better, but not by an entire tier, in my opinion. Yeah. No, or, or even half a tier, honestly. For this MOC, I can kind of see it, because like, there's more single target, so yeah. I can kind of see it. Yeah. Um, if we I get Ice Queen... Oh, oh my god, wait, wait, wait. Yo, right. Hippo, can you explain like why do you hate Mono Quantum so much? Because I think I don't think this was that explained. Do we both agree, first of all, that the Harmony units are just better than the Nihility ones? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that, yeah. that was a I question mean, yeah. I wanted to answer. It, uh, like... Yeah, yeah, like the, the raw amp from the Harmony units just completely eclipses the uh, the Nihility units. So I, I want to make this clear, like I think Silverwolf just has really bad synergy with Sele, specifically. Uh, Silverwolf does not help you kill adds, which in this MLC isn't that big a deal because there's not that many adds. But if you're only running two supports, you'd much rather run Ting and Sparkle for the exact same reason that there's no adds, because you actually need the energy from Ting to keep ulting on Sele, which is most of your damage actually in this type of uh, situation with like high HP elites where you don't rely on your skill damage and if you're running a second support after Ting like it's not so Wolf dude Sparkle just gives you so many more actions so much more like upfront damage than so Wolf and also helps you kill like the few adds that are there instead of having to like skill them twice which I think is a really big deal for her uh, I'm gonna be real right ever since like 1.1 1.2 I I've been like waiting to, to try out Mono Quantum but honestly, now that I've tried it with sustain, it's it's, it's not it, man. It's 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 honestly just not it, bro. It's I I, yeah. I wrote it off even from the moment it uh that shit came came up. I I just completely ignored it. It it sounded like more coke than like copium itself. Like it's like having to run silver wolf as your that's the core of your team just feels so bad. Like I I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Like if, like, the it just right. feels really, really bad to play. It's just clunky as hell. Okay. It can work and be reliable, but for it to work, it will also need like a, quite a lot of investment. Cause Silver needs to be faster than Sailor to, to like implant the weakness. But also, she needs like all the other stats. Yo, the, yo, the only reason, um, the only reason why people say like Mono Quantum is good is because it's very like casual friendly. Because you can you can quite literally ignore. Weakness. That's the entire gimmick of the comp. You just ignore weakness. But for Mono Quantum, you need four limited five stars. Not even like one standard, two standard. You need four limited five stars. And if you're at that point where you're where you already have four limited five stars and you know what you want to play and you know how to build a comp such as Mono Quantum, I don't think you really have to bother or even like be concerned about not having the element because. At that point, if you're already such high investment into Mono Quantum, 
you can just put that investment into something else and you even get better returns. Like instead of pulling Silver Wolf, you could have put uh Jing Liu, you could have put like Ran Mei or something, and your account would instantly uh, be upgraded from there. Why well, is a good team for Silla if you're using Ting and Sparkle on the other team? You don't have Ramen, by the way. Uh, probably just Bronya Pella. Yeah, Bro- Bronya yeah. Pella. Yeah. Bronya Pella. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's nothing else left to run, so yeah. My issue with Mono Quantum is that Silla buffs it allows her to ignore Winner's type anyways because of the Quantum Damage Rest Pencil. Why run Silver Wolf? Okay, I want to say that's fair. Like, 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 you that, just like replace Silver Wolf with like. Ting Yuan? Yeah. Uh, mm. just, just replace Silver Wolf with Ramen and you're instantly having a better team. Why are you not using one to do speed Sailor without running Ramay? Do you hate stacking light coins prefer more CV? Except that most of the time if you are running Sailor, you probably are running Ramay. If you're not gonna be running Ramay, you're gonna be running Team Yun. If you're gonna be running Team Yun, you're gonna get a speed buff. If you don't run Team you're gonna get Bronya. Bronya's gonna get a speed buff as well. So most of the time you are gonna be hitting the stats required to hit whatever kind of speed buff you need. So yeah. Okay, continue. In Bronya, Sparkle, Ramay, does Sparkle need to go before Bronya? Or is it okay if Bronya goes first? Uh ideally you let Sparkle go before Bronya because most of the time you start the game off as like the action value is set so when your sparkle buffs up your um dps your dps can still go but if you let bronya be faster than sparkle and bronya pulls your dps by 100 percent when sparkle pulls your dps won't go next immediately because your dps is effectively at zero again you guys get it so that's the reason why uh, sparkle is better than bronya faster than bronya oh shit all right oh my god is the myth the legend double poop ego star okay this is gonna be our last question for today hippo Genuinely, respectfully saying Ching Yuan is the best lightning DPS in the game is actually outrageous. First of all, the amount of fucking investment it takes for Ching Yuan to even kick off is way too much for him to get crowd control or for his lightning, li- lightning lock to do shit. Second off, you can just build other DPS like Ching Liu and E2, they will credit to Mr. Pokey and they will do way more damage in a shorter amount of build time than fucking Ching Yuan. I'm ex Ching Yuan main, I can assure you Kafka is better than Ching Yuan, alright? Uh, for context, double poop had the worst account in Pokey's review history, uh, but now he has improved. He managed to create MOC 12 3 stars, right? So, all right, Hippo, what do you have to do with it? I'm just baffled because the argument you're giving me is that I'm wrong for saying Jing Yuan is the best lightning DPS because Jing Liu is a better DPS. What the fuck? Okay, hold uh, yeah, anyone I else? have something to add. Yo, go I for it. I have something to add. Go for it. We're, go- we're going back to the topic that I've been on. We're going mm-hmm. to go to PvP, and we're going to look at PvP for a minute. I know PvP isn't the end-all be-all, but the reason you pick Serval over Jing Yuan is because Serval has less variant than Jing Yuan in a one shot scenario. If you can retry 10, 11, okay, 20 I mean, like... times with Jing Yuan to kill it clear faster than Serval, good for you. If I can one shot it with Serval, fucking Jing Yuan sucks. I'm just going to come out and say it. Serval's the best lightning DPS in the game uh... for now. Try not to smile. Uh, with that, we have come to the end of today's content. If you guys want to engage in any further discussions, especially regarding the 2.0 tier list, feel free to leave your comments down below or join the village at Pokey's Village, right? Discord.gg4 says Pokey's Village. If you want to catch on my stream, let's go to Twitch.tv for Shadows of Pokey as well as YouTube. I'm streaming both at the same time. Should be out on the Discord every single day. Uh, all the best for your sparkle pools, and I'll see you guys next time. Right? Take care. This was really fun. Bye bye.